Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming at Mod Dragon's Dogma 2. Today we're talking movement and the various neat ways you can get around the world in or out of combat. What kind of movement tricks or tips can there be for all the vocations? Well, there's some seriously cool stuff you can do for quite a few of them. And of course, if you guys know anything that I don't mention today, then let us know in the comments. But for now, let's just get started. First up then, we have the fighters. We have the specific weapon skill to throw, kind of shield bounce and ally a pawn up into the air. You could do this to say like a warrior or something, try to get it to jump up to a weak point of an enemy. It's a neat idea, but in practice, it's just not all that effective. It doesn't really matter that much. So if I bring a pawn with that equipped, it also isn't working how I hoped. They kind of randomly choose to do it, usually at not necessarily the best moment. However, the tip here is you can get them to do it on command. You need to be near an edge that has an interactable on it so that the pawn can kind of see that and go oh i could maybe launch you up there so out of combat it is relevant you go up to a ledge where there's say a hanging ladder that you can't quite reach the pawn will hopefully react and when it does use the go command and that'll get it to prep and allow for that boost where you otherwise could not reach up there this is about the best we can hope from the current ai but it is at least something and as fighter not being so mobile it's good to have some kind of tip we can give for this next so then we have the archer. Archer is quite mobile at a base level. When you're sprinting and using your light attacks, you do kind of slides. You can jump and bounce off enemies. You can jump and fire at the same time. It's pretty neat. So special tech for this isn't really a huge thing, but there are some interesting details to think about. For example, when we're doing specifically the jumping kick bounce, this causes the archer to strike with their feet, bouncing them backwards, and that goes relatively high into the air. Did you know that you actually extend the distance that you move if you choose to fire an arrow, or you can intentionally not fire an arrow to prevent yourself going further and keep it more vertical and more about the flip. What's cool about this bounce off of an enemy is that it has some kind of iframe. The flip seems to give you iframes during that brief moment outside of say the evasive movement, the verticality, physically dodging an attack. So not only is it a good way to move around mid fight, but it can be a clutch decision when dealing with an enemy that's too close that's maybe about to land a hit on you. I also want to mention that with the kick, whether you're doing a normal kick version or this bounce one, it is fully blunt damage which is fantastic when dealing with those, say, rock saurians. Or if you're running ice in the team, when you turn something to ice fully, it becomes very vulnerable to blunt damage. And you have an infinite source of that with your kicks and kick bounces. But yeah, hopefully those are some useful tricks to do with the bouncing. Next up, of course, we have the mage. And this is to do with celerity, essentially the haste AoE buff that you can use as a mage or more likely have a pawn have equipped. I cannot live without this. It is a movement speed buff and it's also an attack speed or cast speed buff, which is very effective in combat. What's interesting about about this though is that it leans into weapon skills for mobility tricks. As we'll talk about with the warrior, you can lunge and being celerity buffed is significantly faster. I'm about to explain levitating a little bit and with that being momentum based, it can help with that. But let's cover caster levitating in general. You actually carry momentum with your levitate. So while I'm standing here and I just try to levitate, I kind of hop up a tiny bit, but I'm moving very slow on that levitate. I'm not really gonna get anywhere. So as you likely experience in your own gameplay, if you're sprinting and jump and levitate at the right Right time, you kind of carry that momentum, you get a little bit more movement. I find it really hard to run a mage or a sorcerer if I'm playing it without running high frigger. This is the ice spell that creates kind of this upward smash and the result, if it's not hitting an object, is this kind of clump. What this actually is, is just a perfect ramp, which means you're running up at a diagonal and it's almost like the perfect boost for a levitate if you activate that levitate very early into the jump. This is why I struggle to run without this because when you're traversing the land, having this little bit of an extra boost is actually quite high. I'm nearly three times the height of a normal pawn's height. So if I wanna create a platform to actually jump from and get some real height and distance, this is how I do it. I'm using Frigger for this purpose. Also, if you're unaware, you can use levitate to stop fall damage or greatly reduce it. My tip or trick for this one is the moment you begin to fall forward, that's when you actually activate it and then you can hold the levitate, which kind of cancels your momentum. So on the fall, you're not taking as much damage or you stop the damage itself. You just have to be very careful with this kind of jumping because if you wait a little bit too long, the levitate, as you can see, gets instantly interrupted and you will still take fall damage but it will be reduced, so it's still good. I do most of my fall damage cancels by feeling right as I'm about to fall forward. And as
as you can see, I did take fall damage there and slap down, but it would have been probably about double on the normal jump. Let's do basically the same jump, but without actually levitating. And you can see instead of taking a small chunk, I'm taking, yeah, double the damage. So there's just some various levitate tips for you and how I try to use it using momentum to my advantage. Next up on the list then we have Thief, which has some really cool stuff. As you're passive, you're able to run up to a wall and collide with it. Once your hands kind of collide into the wall, you can then jump backwards and hit another wall. At which point you can do the same thing backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Using this, I was able to showcase how you can actually bypass the gate at the southeast point of Back Patal. The thief can baseline use its passive to bounce up between the pillars and get over that, which is a pretty cool tip. And obviously in caves and environments like that, you can make use of this. But in more open exploration, it's very hard to get that to be a relevant, useful thing. Fortunately, we can compete with the casters for general horizontal mobility and even pretty good verticality. To do vertical movement, all you need is one weapon skill. Concussive step combined with another weapon skill, the one that you're likely always running as a thief, it's skull splitter or helm splitter if you've got a weaker version. So run and jump and concussive step, giving you a little boost. If you then use a splitter spin, you get a little bit more height. And if this then collides into a surface, you can grab onto a ledge or essentially reach up higher than you normally would be able to do. Next, if we work in a powder blast, you know, the mine bomb thing you put down and then explode after it's placed, this can mess with your fly ability as well. So running forward concussive step, then proc the actual powder blast you place down, you'll float through the air in this weird way. It essentially means much further horizontal or distance jumping for the thief. And you can still do the splitter spin after that, which will extend that movement even further. I find this movement absolutely fantastic, but it is a lot to commit two extra weapon skills just for movement. So personally, I just run concussive step and that usually does what I need it to, giving me that bit more verticality. Moving forward, we have next the warrior and it's pretty well known at this point, something I've talked about a little bit. It's its weapon skill lunge, whatever version you've got, and it's incredible use for traversal generally when you're just traveling from point A to B. The point of lunge is to dash forward while consuming stamina while you're dashing. You collide with an enemy and then smash them into a wall or something. If you instead use it for travel purposes, it is an incredible movement tech. Since so much of this game is about traveling, just using lunge to intentionally not hit obstacles or objects, walls or whatever, and extend how long you can get this going, probably running down a road or whatever, it's just this little bit better than sprinting effect you can do. However, as I said with the mage celerity buff, if you have a pawn mage actually give you celerity before you do it, that's giving you a haste movement speed buff, which is speeding up how fast the lunge goes. And this is my prime way for getting around if I'm using a Warfarer with Warrior, or I'm just playing the Warrior in general. But yeah, I think this is pretty more commonly known at this point, but it is well worth using, especially in combination with a Mage. Next up, we have the Mystic Spearhand, which has some surprisingly good movement. It's something I've recently explained a couple of times, so I'm gonna be pretty quick with this. Essentially, the idea is that you can use your core skill Redelted Ball to interrupt your movement. So let's say you just do a quick hop and then unleash it. It will hold you in place and also push you back a little bit. You can turn the way that it's pushing you to reach for ledges or something. Obviously off a basic jump, that's not very high. But if you combine it with a weapon skill that launches you up into the air and normally brings you straight back down, the height of that jump, you can let go a pre-charged bolt and that will interrupt your momentum hanging in the air at the point of this high up jump. And again, pushing you in a little direction. Because that's completely controllable by you, you can use this to reach up like a double jump and then reach for a ledge that is twice your height you can't normally can't reach at all. The weapon skill that has you dash and thrust forward, well, this actually holds your momentum and allows for the leap up straight after. If you let go of a bolt at that leaping up point, you can dash forward up hang in the air. During that time, you could channel out another ball, dash forward again, dash up again, ball again, allowing you to reach ridiculous heights, pretty much inaccessible to every other vocation. Either way, the basic trick is very worth knowing about with bolt stopping momentum. And at a basic level, it's not so hard to do. All right, next up is Magic Archer and this movement tech, it's to do with your pawns. If you didn't know, Pawns will catch you if you leap off a high point and land on them. And you can even do this for them. If they jump off a ledge, you can hold grab and save them from fall damage. However, if you're really high up, like on the side of a cavern, or I don't know, you're in a tower or something like this example, you could 
throw your pawn down there and it's such a drop that anything will die. But who cares? You have this ability to ranged revive with your remedy weapon skill so you can revive the pawn you've thrown off this really high point and now leap down into their arms while they're still getting up forcing them to stay still so it's a pretty much guaranteed or safe catch this is magic archer's movement tech it allows compared to every other vocation the most reliable anti-gravity anti-fall damage thing they're able to stop all fall damage and leap ridiculous drops without any concern about going around or taking their time as long as you know ethically you're okay with really abusing your pawns this is very strong and it feels very dumb to call it like a movement tech but it is genuinely their best movement option so use it and abuse it if you want to Okay, um, next is Trickster. This is my least played vocation. It's just not something I'm very interested in. So if you have any movement-based tips for this one, then please let us know. Because in my research from looking at, you know, other people who are interested in the vocation, there isn't really anything movement-based for this one. So if you have something for Trickster, please let us know in the comments. I'd be very happy to find that they have something. But that brings us to the end with Warfarer in particular, where we can, of course, swap between vocations. You could double up and play, say, Archer for the jump kick, swap to a caster so that you've got the levitate. We could be a warrior just to zoom through the land using the lunge as we talked about. It's hard for me to recommend that you use a Warfarer for mobility purposes, because all you really need is a good core skill that has good mobility. So having a mage or a sorcerer for levitate, honestly on its own, is usually enough for me. Very commonly, you're going to be running, say, a sorcerer and a thief. This is for Orgrel Flare. Whatever your third vocation is, is up to you. I like Mystic Spearhand because, yeah, you get the insane immunity bubble, but they have Redoubted Bolt, so you can stop all momentum midair as we've talked about. So that's my ideal combo for both combat and movement in general. Mystic Spearhand, Thief, and Sorcerer. But let me know if you found any interesting combos with movement in mind. But there you have it. Those are all the movement tricks and tips that I can give you in one video. Obviously, as I've been saying towards the end there, let me know if you know anything about, say, the vocations of Trickster or any particularly good combos of Warfarer. I hope this could be useful or interesting to you. But for now, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye